This is a video about transition metal complexes. You can use it to go over stuff that you've missed, if you've missed any lessons, or to just recap and check your understanding. You must understand the key vocabulary. Words like ligand, complex iron, and coordination number, you must be able to define. Here's the definition of ligand. Here's the definition of the complex iron. And on the next slide, you'll see the definition of coordination number. A ligand is an electron pair donor. Now, to differentiate a ligand between a nucleophile, then what you should also add to your definition is that a ligand is an electron pair donor which forms dative covalent bonds with a metal ion. Ligands can be neutral and examples of neutral ligands are water molecules and ammonia molecules and you can see that when water is behaving as a ligand it's known as an aqua ligand and ammonia when it's behaving as a ligand we call it the amine ligand. Ligands can also be negative and examples of negative ligands are your chloride ion and your thiocyanate ion. And you tend to call the chloride ligand chloro, and you tend to call the thiocyanate ligand thio, oops, cyano. All the ligands on this slide are known as simple monodentate ligands. That means they form one dative covalent bond. So each molecule of water can form one dative covalent bond, each molecule of ammonia can form one dative covalent bond with a metal ion. Um, notice that whilst these are common examples, in examinations you could have other ligands that would be monodentate. So coordination number is defined as the number of bonds to the central metal ion. Notice it is not the number of ligands. And that's really important that you remember that. Here's an example of a complex ion that has six ligands surrounding the metal ion, four ammonias and two waters. Coordination number is six because there are six dative covalent bonds. Here's the formula. And this complex would be an octahedral shape and the bond angle would be 90 degrees. Here's an example of a complex ion that has four ligands and they're all four chloride ion ligands. Um, and again, we've now got a coordination number of four. Here's the formula. And this complex ion would be a tetrahedral shape and it would have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Consider this question here. Would the angle in your water molecule be different when that water molecule is acting as a ligand? Now think about how you work out what a bond angle is and then consider that if it has changed and if it's changed has it got bigger or has it got smaller. Well hopefully you've remembered that the bond angle in a water molecule is 104.5 degrees because it has two bonding pairs and two lone pairs around the central oxygen. Well, hopefully, again, you've thought about this and you can see that now, when the water's behaving as a ligand, you've now got three bonding pairs and one lone pair. So, in fact, this bond angle will have got bigger and it will be about the 107 degrees. You have to be able to draw these 3D diagrams of complex ions. So, if you look at the formula of your complex, here I can see I've got a complex where the copper is the central metal ion and it's surrounded by six water ligands 
Um, so I know I've got a coordination number of six, so it's going to be an octahedral. So you put your metal iron first and you draw the six bonds around your metal iron. So one above and one below, two going behind and two sticking out in front. You then put your ligands on showing which part of your ligand molecule or ligand iron is actually forming the dative covalent bond with the metal iron. So in the case of water it's going to be the oxygen atom and good practice is also to put the lone pair of electrons on in each case. There you go. Don't forget your square brackets and the charge. To draw this complex, well again you have a coordination number now of four because I've got four monodentate ligands so I know each ligand is going to be forming one bond, so I'm going to have four dative covalent bonds around my central iron. Now I know that this is tetrahedral, so again, to represent that as 3D, I have two normal lines, and then have one that's dashed, and one that's a triangle, and then again, put your chlorides on each, and again, square brackets and the relevant charge. Complexes that have a coordination number of four, such as this platinum complex, can also have a different shape. This particular complex has a square planar shape. Now you represent that by putting again the metal iron, but because it's now in a square, you've got two pointing behind the platinum and two dative covalent bonds sticking out in front. And now you can put your ligands on again showing that it's the nitrogen of the ammonia that's forming the dative covalent bond and again square brackets and in this case this is a neutral complex so we have no charge. So types of ligand monodentate this means they form one dative covalent bond And our common examples that we've met are water, ammonia, chloride ion, thiocyanate ion, and cyanide is also an example. Bidentate ligands we haven't really talked about yet. Now, these form two dative covalent bonds. So one molecule of this ligand will have two lone pairs of electrons available to form two dative covalent bonds. Now, there's two common examples that you need to know. You've got to know one that's abbreviated to EN. Its chemical name is 1,2-diaminoethane. And its formula is this. And it's the two nitrogens that have the two lone pairs of electrons. Another example is your oxalate iron and that's known as ethane dioate and that's going to be that formula and again it's the two negative oxygens that can form the dative covalent bonds. Now hexadentate, well hexa means it can form six dative covalent bonds and a common example is EDTA and you'll see a diagram of this in your notes.